one of the questions um, that, that we received, um, you know, through, through this process and having people register for this was you know, to discuss about foot abscesses in, in the laminitis case. And, and I know I've got a couple of clients on here at the moment that we've sort of been dealing with, you know, foot abscesses in their, in their laminitic horses. And it is a common occurrence, um, particularly in severe um, laminitic cases, for them to develop a bit of a hoof abscess. And it's not the same sort of progress as a horse that's like running around out in the paddock that develops a hoof abscess. The horse that's running around out in the paddock that develops a hoof abscess, mainly because you know, it goes from a potentially a dry environment to a quite wet environment. The white line gets a little bit um, more porous and little bits of dirt and debris get trapped up in there. In a laminitis case, it's more likely to occur um, in, in, in two ways. One is it's, it's actually occurred because we don't have a huge amount of blood supply to the foot and the abscess is, is formed because there's an area of avascular, so an area of the underlying soft tissue that can't get any blood supply. And so what's basically happened with this horse is that you know, all the corium, the soft tissue that lives between the hoof wall and, and the pedal bone hasn't had great blood supply. And so what's happened is, um, uh, what's happened is it's, it's lost the blood supply and, and all these little inflammatory cells are coming there and they're trying to, trying to clean up um, all, all that dead and necrotic tissue. These, these abscesses are pretty, are pretty common sort of occurrences, particularly in, in severe cases. And in some cases, it can be in, in a foot that's like serious, has some serious vascular compromise. Um, you know, you'll get this really swollen, edematous coronary band, uh, and you won't have any new growth. But a lot of the times with the cases that I deal with that we're actually starting to get on top of them, we'll start to get a couple of abscesses forming because if we change the mechanics of the hoof and we um, get rid of the underlying cause and we've got everything going in the right direction, there is still going to be some damaged underlying soft tissue that the body's going to need to get rid of. And an and, and abscess is just the accumulation of inflammatory cells and inflammatory mediators that are trying to get rid of some, so an area of necrosis or an area of dead underlying soft tissue. So it's not uncommon for us to see in our laminitis cases for them to blow out an abscess, either at the, at the front here at the dorsal coronary band or sometimes in the heels as well. Um, so just I, with, um, just yeah. with abscesses and kind of touching on what you just mentioned with pain relief, I know that was one question a lot of people wanted to know is when to intervene, you know, when do you give Butte, when do you give Flinixin, um, do you, don't you? Or is it, you know, always kind of relying on what your vet and your farrier recommend to do? Yeah, obviously, whenever we're talking about uh, pain relief, particularly um, prescription medications, um, we need a, a veterinarian involved to decide on, you know, what, what's the best prescription, you know, pain relief to use. And, and like you've sort of mentioned, um, we've got uh, phenylbutazone or, or bute, which is a pretty, pretty common anti-inflammatory. Um, and then we've got flunixin, which um, is not something that I commonly use for my laminitis cases, but can, can be used as a pain relief, particularly in, in things like colic. And then there's a final, uh, a final uh, anti-inflammatory called meloxicam, which is um, uh, just a little bit more of a, a milder anti-inflammatory. So I think like the real question is, you know, it, it depends really in terms of, of whether we use anti-inflammatories or not, I think it is an important consideration, particularly in the early stages and particularly when a horse is painful. You know, like we've discussed, laminitis is, is the inflammation of the lamellar attachment. So if we give something like, like bute paste, for example, that is an anti-inflammatory, that's obviously gonna help the whole uh, inflammatory cascade and can be really helpful for the horse. It's particularly important for some of these equine metabolic syndrome or these Cushing horses, particularly some of these smaller horses, is because if they, once they get laminitis, they stop moving. And, and part of the rehabilitation and the management of these metabolic cases is that we need them to start moving. So if they have a laminitic episode, maybe they're eating a bit of grass or maybe they're eating a hard feed that's got too much non-structural carbohydrates in them and they stop moving, 
then their metabolism kicks into overdrive and we can't really kickstart them again. So having a little bit of butte or something like that for these cases can be very helpful. Um, if we get into the more extreme cases, you know, and we, you know, we're trying to deal with cases that have very little um, lamellar attachment, and we're starting to do things like long-term, you know, uh, pain relief such as nerve blocks and a few other systemic um, pain relievers. That can get a real juggling act. But I think for the majority of cases, having an anti-inflammatory, particularly like butte, that's probably the one that I use the most. Um, it's really important for dealing with a lot of these cases. Obviously, with something like butte, we do need to think about um, gastric ulcers, hindgut ulcers, um, uh, uh, sort of the, the major things, and sometimes kidney disease if they're getting you know large doses for long periods of time. So again, whenever you're dealing with a case of laminitis, particularly if we're looking at um, anti-inflammatories, hey, Link's here. Here we go. Everyone, give Yay. me a round of applause. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Just. Just on that, Luke, with pain management, what's your thoughts on icing and, and standing horses on a soft, you know, like shavings or, or something like that to support their feet? Is that something you recommend for people to be able to do at home before, you know, when a case comes along? Certainly like icing and cryotherapy, it, it, like particularly early on in the piece when it's, um, when they first have a laminitic episode, I think that can be really important. And certainly the research around um, the use of cryotherapy for laminitis cases has, has been shown to be really effective. The more difficult part about that is it's only really effective in the acute phase and acute phase only lasts up to 72 hours. So it's sort of, you know, for cryotherapy to be truly effective, it needs to be done like maybe in a, in a hospital situation. And sometimes it's not very practical to continue icing horses feet. That's where it's probably a little bit more difficult. 